fellow junkies, Horror Junkies 509, Kyle 13th coming at you again today, you guys, and happy Friday, you guys. It is film day for me, so here I am, ready to do another video for you guys, for you to enjoy. So what's going on out there, you guys? I hope you're having a killer day. Uh, what's up, my old subscribers, and how you doing to my new subscribers, if you got some new guys out there? Uh, what am I doing today, you guys? I did recently do a ranking video of the 31 uh, big three horror franchises, you guys, uh, ranking them from best to worst. Uh, if you have not checked that, or from worst to best, sorry. <laughs> Gonna blow that one. Uh, but like I said, I did a ranking video recently, and I really enjoyed it. So I really wanted to kind of dig into some more of these ranking videos. And I asked you guys if you had one you wanted me to do. And of course, I do have a viewer that uh, definitely gave me a great idea, and I'm excited because that is what I'm doing today, you guys. This is a recommendation video, and I've been working on it all week, and I'm stoked to do this. So... This was uh, requested by a viewer called Phantom Collector. Honestly, one of my best viewers, you guys. He watches all my videos. He comments. You know, he's subscribed. And, uh, you know, every video I do, he gets gives me a great comment, you guys. And some great advice. And, like, you know, what he thought and thinks. I think it's awesome, you guys. And I love reading it. And I love replying to him every single time. That could be any of you guys. You guys, if you comment to me, I will get back to you. I'm just one of those YouTubers, you guys. It is a, it is a uh, passion project because I watch YouTube just like you guys do, uh, as well as I do videos. So I, that's why I make sure to do it because I've put now I've sent many comments and never hear anything back. But that's neither here nor there. So what am I doing today, you guys? I'm doing a top ten of my uh, favorite horror scores, you guys, because uh, Phantom Collector is a big collector of uh, horror music, you guys, and I am as well. I really only kind of collect the uh, Friday Thirteenth uh, vinyls, but I wish I could do more. It's just you know the money's got to be there. So. To get right into this, you guys, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this without kind of playing the music, you guys. So I'm going to post this the way I want to do it. So it might get muted. It might get taken down. I might get uh, like a, bla a, a black mark on my YouTube record, but I just don't know how else to do this. So I'm going to go out about it the best way I know how. And uh, hopefully you guys will get to see this. And uh, hope all my hard work doesn't go to waste. But uh, here we go, you guys. I do have one honorable mention to go through first, and then we'll get to the my top ten, and we'll go from there. So I'll I'll let you listen to it, then I'll come back and talk to about it a little bit. And so here we go, honorable mention. mention had to be Jaws you guys because I filled out this entire list and I realized it wasn't on there and there is absolutely no time ever that I've ever been in the water and I have not made this sound while I was swimming so there's no way I could make it on my top 10 but it also deserves to be on this list so very much and I did if I do a part two um I didn't want to wait that long because Jaws deserves it is one of those songs that will forever haunt me at, and when I'm in the water, even though I'm not afraid of the water and I usually swim in lakes. Uh, but, you know, there's always a chance there's a shark. Because in any shark movie, it, it can come to the lake. There's a movie called Shark Lake, even. So, definitely had to put Jaws, you guys. So, that was my honorable mention. And so, here we go on to the top ten, you guys. And here is number ten. Let's see what it is. <laughs> Yes, you guys, Psycho, in at number 10, you guys, The Prelude. Uh, I have loved this song for so long, you guys. I love a lot of the songs from Psycho, even this little shower shriek song. But, I mean, this song 
has always stuck with me, you guys. Uh, this was my very first black and white film. Uh, my dad, not being much of a horror fan, uh, he showed me this movie, you guys. And uh, I will never forget it. That was one thing that me and my dad always bonded over was Psycho. And Psycho 1 is just always going to be a masterpiece to me, you guys. This song, uh, one thing I'll always remember about it is because I bought it on DVD for the very first time. And I was so excited. I brought, I came home and I made one of my, a couple of my friends watch it. They're like, we don't watch black and white movies. This was like, well, you are today. And so this song is playing because it's in the credits, you guys. And my dad just hollers down and says, don't get scared now. And no matter what I go through in life, you guys, that's one of those things I'm going to remember just because my dad, he's a goofball no matter what. And, uh, you know, I, I got to give him props for showing me Psycho for the very first time. Uh, yeah, Psycho in at number 10, you guys. Let's go on to number nine. What do we got? Phantasm, not a franchise I speak of a lot on my channel, you guys, but I definitely have love for this franchise, you guys. Uh, and this song is haunting to the chilling of my bones. Seriously, it can send uh, chills up my spine every time I see it. And then you see the tall man, you guys. It just fits so great. Honestly, when it comes to horror, you guys, piano, synthesizers, that kind of stuff, when done right, it is such a flawless, and I mean flawless, um, combination you guys and you'll see on my list that I am a fan of a lot of piano s synthesizer s music I mean it's not all of it you guys but it definitely is there and it is present you guys but phantasm definitely in number nine you guys I absolutely do love that intro theme you guys and it is a staple for that franchise you guys and uh what do I got to say besides put it at number nine you guys this has just begun let's go into number eight let's see what it is Coming in at number eight is Candyman, the music box version, you guys. And I got to tell you, like, I know it's very reminiscent to the Helen theme, uh, but it just gives it that kind of music box vibe. And it, I, I know it's the Helen's one's like a piano, I believe. But the music box vibe, you know, it kind of gives it that playful, like almost child-esque uh, sound to it. But it, there is something so dark in that song that it, I mean, I just love it. Like, every time I hear it, I mean... I didn't watch Candyman as a kid, and so I didn't really get the nostalgia, or I was never afraid of him. Uh, but I am gaining more and more respect for this franchise the more I watch it. And this song, whoops, there goes my notebook. Uh, this song is just a prime example of the power of this franchise, you guys. I know there's only three of them, and they got the remake coming out, which I'm pretty excited for. Uh, but yeah, Candyman, the music box version. Even as an adult, this thing will haunt my dreams, and I just, I absolutely love it. And I'm just going to hear, Kyle. And I'm like, mm, I didn't say your name. I still refuse to say Candyman five times in a mirror. What am I going to say? Number eight, Candyman, you guys. Moving on into number seven, you guys. It's going to heat up. Sit back, relax, listen, and enjoy.
work and no play makes Kyle a very dull boy. <laughs> I had to do something psychotic for the shiny, you guys. And for some of the sound quality on some of these clips, you guys, I apologize. My speakers just are not that great. And as you can tell from The Shining, which made it to number seven, you guys, uh, my the tune is just too evil for my spirits, my speakers to handle spirits. Uh, but yeah, you guys, the one thing that always sticks out to me in this theme is the fact that it makes me feel like I am at a desolate place, kind of like the Overlook Hotel. Like, you know, there's no one to help. I'm out there by myself. It makes me feel like I'm alone. And I think that's something that makes that movie so powerful is the music, you guys. Because I know the Shining movie is not exactly, quote unquote, the, a great rendition of the book. And I know it's, I know it's not. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great movie, you guys. But I just think that the music really pushed this to be what it is now. It is a classic. It is a horror classic. Never mind that it's not like Stephen King's like thoughts of it. He doesn't, he doesn't like it. Hates the movie, you guys. But I mean, this movie is so important still without any help from uh Stephen King or like him liking it but this music haunts me to the core and like just the way it should and it just makes me feel alone even though I could be watching the movie right next to Angelina you guys and so I think that's the type the tone that they were definitely going for because like you know you're in a desolate hotel and uh yeah there was no help anywhere near and that music definitely portrays that and uh as you can hear from my speakers it is just too evil <laughs> Gotta love it, though. So that is number seven, you guys. Right on in to number six. Let's rock and roll. Well, it's not a rock and roll song, but here we go. Yes, the power of Christ compels you, you guys. <laughs> Coming in at number six is The Exorcist, you guys. The Tubular Bells. That movie touched me in so many different ways as a child. That sounds really weird, but I mean, honestly, that movie scared the crap out of me when I first watched it, you guys. It has made an impression on my life, and I'll never, ever forget it. And this music was just taunting me the entire time I was just watching this movie frightened out of my mind you guys and uh so that's why this song definitely makes it to part number six because seriously uh this music it just gives me like it's so like the piano is so soft but it also gives me a sense of frantic like that like you know when they're trying to uh get the demon out of uh out of the girl and it's just for some reason it just fits so well and uh it just adds to my the haunting of that what that film has done to me like i watch it now and i'm fine but you know i'll never forget that feeling that i'll have every time i listen to this song and every time i watch that movie i'll never forget that night when i first watched it and my friend fell asleep on me and i watched it by myself you guys <sighs> seriously guys yes but number six is the exorcist you guys we are in the top five and i'm not slowing down you guys here we go on to number five
That song just does it for me. The Fog, you guys. Honestly, I love The Fog, the movie, but that song, I think, just knocks that movie out of the park. It just takes it from what what it is as the movie uh, at a level, and it just takes it up just a little bit higher just by the music, you guys. John Carpenter, you already knew he was going to be on this list in one way or another. He may even be on here again. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But the immediate terror at the beginning of this song just sets it off. And then as it kind of comes down into the piano and as a piano synthesizer, I just love that tune, you guys. Like, you know, it kind of feels like it's kind of calming down from the beginning of the music. But you definitely know that there's something amiss, something eerie, something definitely wrong going on in this movie just by the music you guys i really feel like it sets it up just how john carpenter wanted to do it in that movie you guys the immediate terror and then kind of brings it down into a calm sense of security false sense of security actually because here comes the fog and you're about to die that's what i hear i don't know what i don't know what music does to you guys but i mean it definitely um exudes emotion out of me like when i hear things like this i'm just like i know exactly what they were going for kind of and i i just I can feel the terror. I can feel what they're trying to give to us just through the music, you guys. And that's why I think music is so very important to this genre specifically. Like a lot of other movies, I mean, they could do whatever. But I mean, horror and the score is very important, you guys. That was number five, you guys. Seriously, we got four more. I hope you guys are ready to rock and roll. Even though it's not rock and roll, you guys. But, you know, it's still. I'm having a great time. Uh, seriously, might be doing a part two. Uh, so let's go on to number four. Here we go. is not the things of nightmares i don't know what is you guys yes number four a nightmare on elm street you guys that song is so fitting for that franchise because just listening to it is almost a nightmare all the off key like notes that it plays and just the utter guttural fear sounds that they came up with i what more could you want for a nightmare franchise? I mean, one of the biggest franchises ever. And what they put together for just the first film right off the bat was nothing but a nightmare itself. Like, I don't know how they did it, but I seriously think this is one of the most flawless themes of all time. And it's at my number four, you guys. Just remember, you guys, this is all my own opinion, you guys. You guys all have your own opinions down there, so you can leave them down in the comments on your um, opinions and everything like that. And I appreciate everybody having their own opinion, but Nightmare on Elm Street is definitely my number four. Top three, you guys. We're only getting closer to the top. All right, here comes number three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, that's right. Hellraiser coming in at number three, you guys. Uh, biggest reason being, I don't think this is just the theme to the Hellraiser movies and franchise. I think this is the soundtrack to your own very own trip to hell. <laughs> Definitely, you guys. Like, it kind of starts off kind of soft at the beginning. And then, like, as it kind of picks up into the booming, I just kind of see myself, like, from Bill and Ted when they're falling, like, for a very long time going to hell. But I see myself. And, uh... That's my interpretation of that, you guys. It's the soundtrack to your very own trip to hell. And so, if you continue, you're only going to find out if you're there for pleasure or pain. Number three, Hellraiser, you guys. I got nothing bad to say about this one. Um, Hellraiser, one of the franchises that came to me in, a very late in my life. You know, I didn't ever watch them as a kid. Uh, I watched them a lot later on when I kind of learned about them and stuff like that. I didn't really know of Pinhead or Hellraiser when I was a kid. I think I knew of Pinhead, but I just, I'd never watched any of his movies. Uh, but I am a legit fan. I mean, obviously not of all of them because they get pretty terrible. Uh, but this song definitely um, can definitely uh, exude what he's trying to do for this movie. I mean, it's all about hell and like, you know, you doing the wrong things and stuff like that. Searching for different types of pleasure and pain. Angels to some, demons to others. You guys already know it. Hellraiser, number three. You guys, we are in the top two, you guys. Um, if you guys watch my channel, you probably really already know how the rest is going to play out. But don't remember, stick around because you don't always know everything, but you might. Here we go. Number two, guys. first you guys this is no disrespect or slight against the original theme you guys i absolutely love the original halloween theme but to me the halloween 2 theme is that theme plus so much more and that's why the halloween 2 theme is at number two on my list you guys this score is so much fun for me to listen to it's got so many different vibes going into this score than just the, than the original. I love the whole beginning part, the like dread and then it gets to the original theme. Uh the the dun 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 dun, dun. like you can't have a Halloween theme without it, my personal opinion of course. Um I think it's very important and quintessential to that franchise you guys, but I love all the different elements that is brought in for this theme uh to make it not part 2 uh even more than just the original, but it is um it gives you that franticness because Michael Myers is still on the loose. I mean, it, feel, it still kind of gives you that dread knowing that he's an unstoppable killing machine. He was shot six times and he's still coming after you guys. Number two, absolutely no slight against the original, is Halloween Part 2 theme, you guys. We are on top right now, you guys. We are going into number one. And if you guys honestly do know me, you guys kind of have an idea where this is going. Uh, but you know what? I feel good about it. I've went over this list a thousand times and I feel pretty good about this. So here is my number one horror theme, you guys. And I mean, these are these may be ranked, but I love all these songs so much, you guys. This was a really hard ranking for me to do because I do love all these. And there's so many more that I do love. So if your song was not on here, 
I still want to do a part two, you guys. But th if this video does well, I will do a part two. And I also want to do um, soundtracks, like, you know, the songs that, like, bands do for the these horror movies. So there's more that could possibly come from this. But uh, we'll get into that, you guys. Here is my number one horror score. saw it coming you guys friday the 13th the main theme from the original uh score is my number one you guys um there's honestly a lot of things i could say about this uh score you guys it means so much to me and it's it's nostalgic it's everything it's friday the 13th is still my favorite franchise you guys and the music is almost its own character in these movies you guys especially the stuff done by harry manfredini the guy was a complete master of his craft you guys and i think he did so much great things to that franchise, you guys. I have a feeling without Harry Manfredini's music, I don't think Friday the 13th would be quite what it is today, you guys. Um, I have a feeling it'd still be big, but I think his music honestly put it a little higher than it almost deserves to be. Like, I know the Friday the 13th movies are goofy, they're silly, they allow a lot of people to take them seriously and stuff like that, but I think with the music and kind of put it together with the film, you guys, I just think it was uh, a ball of fire, you guys, and no one was quite ready for it. It was such a big hit. And I have met Harry Manfredini personally, and he is such an awesome person, you guys. He was so happy that I came by just to see him and, you know, get an autograph, get his music and stuff. And he's so awesome, you guys. So that might make me a little biased when it comes to this list. Uh, but, you know, the guy deserves it more than anything I could ever say. Uh, so he is my number one spot, you guys. Harry Manfredini for Friday the 13th, the original score, you guys. I, I can't say enough good things about it. I love that it's like a, the calm before the storm a little bit. And then you instantly get into the frantic, there's a killer chasing me through the woods vibe from this music, you guys. It's got everything all in one package, you guys. And that's not all. There's tons more of this kind of music um, from all the, uh, not all the movies. Because Harry Manfredini didn't have a hand in every single one of them. But uh, so many of the good chunk ones he did. So, I absolutely love his music, and I absolutely love the guy. He's so awesome, you guys. And so, that is my top 10 list of my favorite horror scores, you guys. There's tons more that I would love to put on here, but I had to pick 10. Of course, I had to do an honorable mention just to get Jaws in here, but it deserves it, and I really don't think anyone will disagree with that. Oh, this has been quite a day, you guys, and I really hope that this does this video does not get me kicked off YouTube with all the copyrights and stuff like that. I'm going to try and do everything right. Uh, I hope you guys get to hear it, um, but hopefully if they just mute it, you guys can still see the, the panel of what, like the song that's playing, so you guys can actually go listen to it yourself, so even um, if they mute it, you can play it while that's happening, uh, but definitely, you guys, if you guys like this, let me know it by liking, commenting, and subscribing, you guys, 
Let me know how much you liked it. I would love to do a part two, but if this doesn't, if this isn't a uh, good idea, uh, uh, I won't do another one. Uh, but who knows? Angelina said she really wanted to get on, the, get in on this as well. So maybe we might do a part two just so we can get Angelina's uh, input on this because I think that'd be really cool. But that's gonna do it for me, you guys. Horror Junkies 509, Kyle 13, signing out. Just until next time, you guys already know it. I've been sentenced to life. I am a horror lifer, and you guys keep listening. You guys, these horror scores are amazing, and you guys have a killer day. And stay bloody, my friends. Until next time.